Welcome to the Nicholas Natali Show. Please drop five stars and leave a review. This week on the show we have the legend himself, H. Puentes. Hit the music boys. Hello and welcome. It's a beautiful day in sunny San Diego. It's a little overcast <laughs> outside. This is the Nicholas Natali Show. I am your host, Nicholas Natali. I meet with individuals that have found life strategies to live a more fulfilling life. Today, we have a very special guest, H. Puentes, in the building. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> what's good? H. is H is doing has done a lot of things and is going to continue to do a lot of things. He's running for... City Council, San Diego City Council, District One, baby, District One. So, um, so there's a lot of cities in San Diego County. So you have to like dive in San Diego City Council. San Diego District City Council. One. But yeah, we're we're gonna start off. So you were born in New York City. I was born in New York City. Yep, um, Beth Israel Hospital, and then my in in Manhattan, and my uh, my grandmother. Uh, had a place in Elmhurst, so in Queens, and that's where I was for the first two years of Existence. life. Yeah, uh, and then we headed over to Texas. Nice. Yeah. And so then it's Katy, Texas. Katy, yep. Yeah. So we landed in, in a little town called Katy. Might as well. It's just Houston. It's just out west on the I-10. And, uh, and then we were there for... Maybe three years, something like that, and then we headed over to uh, this this other little place called Cyprus, mm-hmm. which now is like you know the full blown suburb of Houston. But when we were there, it was a lot of open space. We had cow farms next to our high school, so you know, good old Texas. Are you? Did you become a farmer type type guy, outdoorsy? <laughs> outdoorsy. So. In the outdoorsy, in the the glamping sort of way. So we would have our parties were a little different in high school. We're like bonfire parties. So you would, you know, there'd be somebody on the football team that had, you know, an, a dad that had some extra land. We'd drive out to the land, and then we'd like build a giant bonfire that you probably shouldn't have been able to do. Nice. That was the era, and yeah. and then we'd camp out all night and have a good time and have fun. But we would camp out there, um, you know. Cowboy hats and and you know spurs. No spurs. No spurs. Didn't go that far. Big belt buckles. No, I have. Friends, <laughs> look, I have. I have friends. Shout out to the to the friends back in Houston. They, I have some friends that'll bust out some belt buckles on you. And, oh dang. Uh, yeah. Um, but I just I was you know, interesting. I, I I have a a really weird background in that. Like I was ESL, which is like English is your second language. So so my first couple years of school were in a class to get my English better. Oh, Ironically, wow. the Spanish was our first language. My Spanish is not as good as my English uh, nowadays. Just practicing? Yeah, because of practicing and just, you know, being being in the U.S. And, and, and over in Europe, I just didn't get to use it as much. And uh, and so, yeah, so, so, and so, like, salsa dancing and salsa music was my, you know, when people had, like, I guess, you know, like, Elton John or, you know, other kind of music, you know, the the Queen or the, the you know, mine was all like salsa singers. Yeah. So so I've always been in this place where like c- culturally at home things were different than what they were, and so I always was able to be like understand all these different like types of cultures and types of people. Which so I never took it like far, you know. But I I'll, I'll rock a cowboy hat on you. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but yeah. Spurs. I don't know about Spurs. Yeah, yeah, a little too much. Yeah, yeah. strong. That's cool that you had both um, cultures. I feel like that really works to your advantage. And I heard they call it Katie Suela now for Texas, right? Because of a lot of the Venezuelans are occupied. Oh, I didn't know this. Yeah. So I haven't been. I haven't been back in. Jeez, I left when I was seventeen, uh, uh, Houston. So I haven't been back, um, like living there. You know permanently for a while so it, it houston's booming houston's changed so much yeah. the whole area is just growing with people and it's a great city and it's a great place to, to raise kids and you know it's got some really cool 
principles of like you know like and I get in trouble for it still to this day for saying yes sir yes ma'am like yeah. people are like especially in, in, in Europe when we lived in London like a sir is actually something like that's like a knight or something you know? oh really yeah, wow like a, so that's like a title or something and I'd be I'd be yeah. throwing out <laughs> yes sirs and yes ma'ams that didn't you know I'm younger royalty. older yeah because yeah. that's what you do in Texas you know you say it to a little kid yes sir yeah. you know they yeah. ask you know Hey, can I get the yes, sir, yes, ma'am? Like it's just what you did, you know, and and that's just how I was raised, and I really appreciate being raised in Houston and and some of those principles of of just you know being nice to people and showing respect. Yeah. Maybe sometimes a little more than 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 usual, but mm -hmm. I always I always think that that's helped me a lot. Yeah, definitely. Speaking of just just being raised in that area, around twelve or thirteen hard times start to hit. I want to know kind of what that looked like and, and the role your mom played in that. Yeah. It seems like she had a, a big role in bringing you up. Yeah. My mom's a, my mom's my, my everything. Uh, I grew up with, you know, all in a male dominated household. So it was five, five men and one, one queen. And a lot of wrestling or? Yeah, yeah, you know, because you're growing, you're yeah. growing, and 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 you're you're learning, and you're you know, it's um, you know, that's how you get the tight bonds, and and so you know, like I said on the Creative Mornings talk, we, you know, we grew up with a lot of a lot of things, you know, we we had we had money, and and we were able to do things, and as a little kid, you you get to you never got to know, you just. Yeah, I want those boots, or I want that, or I want this, and you'd yeah. always get it. And then you know, things happen, whatever it is, and you find yourself in hard times. And then all of a sudden, you can't. It was weird. I I, I was always a like an aware person. I've mm -hmm. always been aware of like dynamics and people, and like I you know I was the number two son, so I always had to negotiate my yeah, way through. Yeah. I wasn't the baby. I kind of would just get it because he's the baby, and I wasn't the oldest that could sort of just kind of de not Punk. demand it, but yeah. yeah, like just be the older bro, right? Yeah. Um, I was number two, so I had to negotiate everything that that I got. So that made me, I think, really aware of like dynamics in a way that perhaps understand other, situations to be yeah, able to leverage or right, whatever. right to figure out yeah. what what's the angle here yeah, like yeah. i need to get this controller yeah. and <laughs> the older brother's got it so how you haven't I, had snacks in a while right, <laughs> right wide exactly open. like yo you know mom's cooking something amazing yeah. why don't you go down and check it out <laughs> um but um so yeah so we fell on some hard times and and real hard times you know we i, I know what it is to to be on the, what in texas it's called the lone star card um, which is basically, you know, um, subsidized, uh, you know, support um, that that you can get groceries with, and and that's why it's funny you say that. We just um, to this day, kicks are my favorite cereal, and um, wow, and because that's you can get you can only get certain things. It has to have a WIC W I C sign on it, and. and Certain things, and it's funny because you know, yesterday we went to the grocery store and there were kicks, and yeah. I'm like, I bought like two boxes. Heck yeah. I, I love, yeah, I love heck kicks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, kicks are bomb. Kicks, kicks are the bomb, man. Um, and so, um, so, so yeah, so it was struggle, and and being aware, you you start to see, you know, that that things are different, and you start to understand what what are the implications of that, and you know. I, you know, I give a lot of credit to my older brother in that he really, he really, you know, we did our, you know, he would really took it upon himself to, you know, he was always been, you know, my brother's very creative. He was always very, he's very good at soccer. He played the D1 um, oh, wow. um, in uh, at Belmont University, starter, you know, just always was in his soccer. Uh, and so he was always gone or, or, or training, but um but when it came to step up as a big brother, he was always the best big brother you could ever have. He is the best big brother you could ever have. And that, awesome. like he, he would he'd step up and he'd step up in a way that you know, that protected you, that you know, made you that he knew the decisions that needed to be made so that you didn't feel the impact as much. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good quality of a of a big brother or big sister. And I was just blessed to have that. And and so you know, with him, I realized like. 
you know, that, that we had to, you know, he kind of took me like as his little deputy to be like, okay, like, we, you know, things are different now. Yeah. We've got to step up. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so it was just, the, you know, it's, it's a really interesting time of, of while it was a lot of difficulty, it brought our family in a lot of ways together. And, you know, and to see my, you know, going to my mom is like, you know, she's this, little she's like kind of white colombian lady and my dad's very dark and we're all kind of dark boys and mm -hmm. it's funny because my mom's like tiny tiny and but she runs the house like a like a like a champ like yeah the queen she is and and she's got authority in that voice. Yeah, yeah and and when we were in struggle she you know she stepped up to you know my, that's both not my easy. parents no it's not yeah. it's not and both my parents did and they said you know like they went back to school late, you know. They were the first married couple to matriculate, basically go through the university and graduate um, from University of St. Thomas in Houston. Like, they were the first. And while we were struggling, they had to go to school. And so we knew, you know, Kay, my older brother, like, you know, understood that we had to step up. And that means we had to cook. We had yeah. to clean, you know. Yeah. So it's funny because in my house, all of my brothers, we all know how to cook. We can iron. We can clean. Oh man! We can do all the work. Very to be a husband, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, and so, you know, everybody kind of stepped up, and and my mom, you know, she, we got we got to some tough times, and and my mom would would you know go around, and we'd ask food from churches. Yeah. And you know, and it's like we really needed the help, and 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 to see her have to do that, that that'll sear into anybody's soul. See your mother, you know, especially remember, like, it's just, that's the only female that I know. It's my yeah. mom yeah. at this point. And, and so to see your, your mother have to do that and fight that hard for her kids, um, it's just something that, that, that I carry with every day. And it's probably the, you know, the most premium I put in my tank is though that, that time. And, and while it was really tough and it was really a lot of struggle, um, it really, built a character that I think has, has continued and, and has had probably one of the most important impacts in my life. And, and it all stems from the fact that I just, I never want to see my family have to do that again. Yeah. I never want to see my mother have to do that. And, you know, we had an amazing neighbor, uh, the Campbells, Gene Campbell and Betty Campbell, like they, they, they caught wind of what was happening. They'd take us grocery shopping they would ask us, you know, in our bus stop lane before Gene would uh, go off to work. He'd stop and say, hey, you guys got lunch money? Wow. Like, this is like, you know, we're 10 years old, 11 yeah. years old. Like, you know, that's that's the stuff that sears. You know, yeah. everybody's got their stuff. We're not we're not any different than anyone else. I'm sure you've got stories that, like, you're like, whoa, that's seared in me, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, yeah. um and so and so that that that's kind of built a lot of the character in me and and I'm so thankful to have gone through that uh, and to have learned from that and and I think it like I said it's a it's a big thing of of why I want you know um I want to fight for 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 people not to feel that way. Mm -hmm. I want to fight for people to to you know um to be able to 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 live in this world to be able to 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 not you know, have to go around looking for food. You know, yeah. some basic st stuff. We got we got to do a good job of making sure that everyone can eat. And in this time where we're the most wealthiest country in the history of of mankind, yeah. we we've, yeah. we've got to do a good job of making sure that nobody's going to bed hungry and and no one's struggling and or you know and and give it our best shot. And then that's kind of molded me into into where I'm at today. Nice, love it. And I almost feel like. It's, it's prepared you to pay it forward in a huge way, kind of like what you're saying. And the, the part about providing for basic necessities, it's like those people, I, I've heard you say it tons of times, there's no monopoly on good ideas. Yep. Like empowering people that don't have anything gives them the capability to go on and exceed, because you or succeed, because they're not struggling with just trying to eat. They're not struggling with just finding a place to sleep. Now they can think about those other things. It's almost like when when you when you don't have money, all you think about is money. But then when you do have money, you kind of you know you have freedom to think about other things. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, of course. It, it, and it actually applies to like 
I feel like it to investing and you know when I'm when I'm advising companies on on like fundraising you know the the biggest thing that that we work on a lot of times with respect to like the soft skill stuff is you can't be desperate yeah because the problem is when you have this scarcity mentality people people sort of smell that in a oh, very yeah. human way like it's just a an a species kind of way like you you can see that desperation in people and then it 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 makes it very difficult and so it's finding that peace you know it's 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 similar to like you know why when you when you're giving a treat to your dog you wait to the tail to stop really right yeah because you want it to be in a in a calm state yeah right and yeah. then you give it the treat um, and that's kind of i think in a lot of ways like life works that way if your tail is wagging for whatever reason that yeah. like it's wagging then then you're not in a calm state yeah. and i think it's important to be in a calm state and and i think back to your original point which is how when you know and with respect to the campaign and, and as a city is how can we put our city and our community in a much calmer state yeah you know and and i see that that you know that that it, we have to make it such that when people want to work hard and when people want to do the right things, there is a path for them. Yeah. If you don't, that's fine. You can, yeah. you, you know, you. This is a, a, if they say free country, you do, the, you do what you want, and I and I support that. But I think that for those that do want an opportunity, yeah, they should be able to have access to it, and we yeah. should do our best to make sure that our, that pipeline, that onboarding process, is as clear. It's got lights path away. It's, it's accessible. Got big yeah. lights. It's got you know. It's accessible and people can get there because because I'm an optimist, right? Like yeah. I actually I've seen it. I I know people at the end of the day are like built for success. People are built to do great things and inherently in them. And if given the opportunity, people rise to the occasion. And we've seen it, you know, through and through in history. And I think, you know, in a lot of ways, it's our job to say, okay, how can we help build that onboarding process? We don't have to do the work for them, yeah. you know. Um, oh, because they have the work ethic. They like, got it. Like that, that struggle that you face, like, instills something in you that, yeah. I got to get after it. Yeah. There's a fire here. So. Yeah, and, and, and even if it's, you know, even if, I, I think everyone's got a, 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 a pursuit in yeah. their life. Everyone's mm -hmm. got a... A passion, even if they haven't struggled in the same way, they struggled in different ways. Yeah, yeah. You know, like your struggle is going to be different than my struggle. Your art is different than my art, but I still think there's something in us that that wants to, you know, um, pursue to that sort of true north. And and um, and and I think that we need to do a better job of 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 helping people get there faster. And that's all yeah. I've ever wanted to do is is. And maybe this stems from that, you know, those tough times is that, uh, you know, we were given support to move out of that, you know, whether it was from the, 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 the food, whether it was community with the, the churches that were able to give us food, whether it's my neighbors, we were always given support. And, and I think that, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, we were ready to work hard. We were ready to do a thing. My parents went back to school. They got their degrees. Um, Which is inspiring in its own right. Like you know, they, they they worked really hard, and 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 so you know, I think it's a matter of as a society, we got to do a really good job of making sure that when people want to to do something, that they can that they can work hard and they can do it. You know, that's that's why people come to America. That's why my parents immigrated yeah. from Colombia. Is is uh, is that this is the land of opportunity? I believe that, and and we just got to do a really good job of making sure that people know where the where the where the on-ramp is yeah you know and heck that's yeah. important to me yeah heck yeah and i mean you've been a testament of finding finding how to get stuff done <laughs> it seems like after after that you went on a yeah a tear. I, yeah i um and I, and I say this in the in the talk shout out to nate spees from creative mornings is um what a guy he's solid and and super humbling to be asked to speak in front of that 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 amazing group of people with the energy that they bring it, it's just incredible um and you know i and i say that you know when 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 i when you used to see your mom struggle and father struggle and and your brother your little brothers and you know 
on yourself. You feel the struggle in the prime of your life. You know, the times when I was supposed to be going out, making friends and skateboarding or, or, or you know, roller rinks or movies and whatever it was, mm-hmm. you know, we couldn't afford it. And so we were, in, you know, we were in the house connecting with my brothers. And, and that's why to this day we have, you know, I'm so thankful for that amazing tight bond I have with my brothers and my family. And, uh, and, but it did create in me somebody that was very much, you know, sort of focused on, on power and focused on, you know, like I said, making sure that we never felt the type of struggle that we felt. And, and what that meant to me as a young kid is when I looked around, I saw that it was the powerful and the wealthy that I thought, you know, now hindsight's twenty twenty, but right. that I thought um, weren't struggling. You know, they had the car, they had pantries full of food and, you know, they could go out and they, you know, they went to the roller rink and they had the newest stuff and the newest clothes. And so I went on a, on a mission to, you know, to sort of put it on me to, 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 to do whatever I had to, to make sure that my family was never going to suffer in that way. Um, and so, you know, I joined all the clubs you had to join. Oh, yeah. I joined all the groups you had to oh, I was yeah. friends with who I needed to be. I got the degrees I needed to be. You know, I was interned for a congressman, then was deputy campaign person for this thing and moved to D.C. and you know, Doing it all. Doing it all to just try to put myself in a position to be successful. And I think, I think the one, you know, the one beauty of it, though, I guess, is that and I, and I thank God for pl- planting this in me or, or somehow I knew that you always had to do right by people. Yeah. And so no matter how like hungry I was for, for that, I always wanted to do right by people. Even when I was a little kid, I mean, I remember um, a good friend of mine, Jason Johnson, we went to prom together. Uh, we thought we were so cool and, uh, <laughs> with, our, with our dates and everything. We, we went to prom together and... And and everybody in school sort of thought I thought I was I, I, I am a little smart you know I'm kind of a smart person and and Jason came up to me one day and was like look like I want to get into Howard I really want to get into Howard nice and I need help with these SATs I'm struggling oh dang and I'm like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not any smarter than you yeah, or anything yeah. but let's study together yeah let's study together and he would come over and we'd be studying his SAT practicing. You know, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm his age, and I'm yeah. giving him advice, and like, yeah. hey, don't stress this. And they, just because I knew that dealing, treating people right was always the the best path forward. Like, yeah. even if you wanted to Whatever. achieve wealth or success or power, you had to do that in a sustainable way. Yeah. You can't just tear through people and yeah. then wonder where they're at afterwards. Yeah. You know, I always knew that, no matter, I always did people right, and that's actually... Ironically, that I amassed more, and I, and people respected me more, and they gave me more um, responsibility, uh, and so J- Jason got into Howard, but I, Heck yeah. it was yeah, it was, and it, and it changed his trajectory, and he's so thankful for that, and and that was like a moment where I just realized like just doing people right, yeah, and so while I while I um, while I was very much like focused on my future and my career and once again making sure that our family never suffered in that way it was always done in a sustainable way like I always understood um, that you that you plant seeds for growth yeah you don't go and like rob the one little carrot that's in the the, the garden and then be starving later you know I always knew that we made sure that we planted enough seeds and that we watered and that we nurtured it and that we grew it so that it could provide a bounty later on and maybe we don't realize that right now but that long-term vision was always in my in my um in my mindset and how I treated people and how I interacted with people don't do it at the expense of other people. It just, you know? it doesn't, and I, and I look, I don't do it, you know, and this is a big part of, of who I am too, is I don't do it because of like a normative reason, which, which in other words means like, you know, I'll give the example, you know, I've been a champion in, in the tech world for diversity big time. Yeah. And, and we, we worked on a project, I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit, but we worked on a project to, to really address the, the inclusive issue in diversity and in tech in particular, right? And try to get different types of people, you know, really sharing in that growth and in that, 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 that wealth that's being generated in that sector. And basically we got 
we got Connect, which is the organization I was part of the executive team there too, to to work with Southeast San Diego, the Jacobs Family Foundation at the Jacobs Center mm-hmm. and the city of San Diego to build an accelerator down in Southeast to to for for diversity focus for LMI, people of color, women, LGBT veteran, disabled entrepreneurs. And they get six month free desk space, they get mentoring, all that stuff. And and people ask, like, how did you how did you sort of navigate through that and, and, and I mean, that's a great question. convince people, right? And, and, and to me, it was like, look, you know, I'm, I'm one. I, I, don't, I get passionate. I love passion. Uh, but I don't think that the passionate, the normative argument, meaning, you know, we should do this. We should, we should have more diversity in tech because it's good for women or good for brown people or, or, or veterans need yeah, our yeah. help. Yeah, yeah. Right? This isn't about being a savior to me. To me, what's much more compelling and has always been compelling, and this goes back to probably my ability to negotiate and, yeah, yeah. you know, there's a two-year-old trying to yeah, get the yeah. controller. Yeah. It's just kind of a, a different, you know, uh, version. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's like I, I presented the business case. Yeah. Right? Like there is a very real economic case for diversity, right? Uh, diverse teams. McKinsey has a report. Diverse teams outperform oh. non-diverse teams with respect to your bottom line. Fortune 500 female CEOs outperform their male counterparts. Like there is data out there. And so if, if, if you really care about your economic bottom line, then you're going to want yeah. more diversity, yeah. right? And I think that's that's the case that I try to look at you know that's my approach it's much more of like what's the practical business case here and i think when you really think about it in different ways and and with the advent of like being able to look at data and big data in in a different way there's ways to quantify some of the positions that that a lot of people share um and I, and what i found and this goes back to just being an optimist what i found is that there's actually a lot of people that if you present them the real business case are like Okay. I get it. Yeah, this yeah. makes sense to me. Like, go ahead, H. Yeah. Like, we support that, yeah. right? And 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 I just never thought about it that way. I yeah. just sort of got the passionate argument, and therefore, like, somehow, you know, it kind of sh- we shut down, and, and 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 it's just natural in a lot of ways that you know, once again, if people are, you know, you know, get emotional, and that's important to be passionate about what you care about, but it's also important to understand how are other people receiving that, Yeah, and what's the best way for them to receive it, right? It's like being a really good waiter. The best waiters are not waiting the table the way they want to be waited. Yeah, They're waiting the table the way they think is best that you want to be waited. Right. So if I, if I pull up on a, on, a, on a business group that I know they're talking business or they're mm-hmm. doing an interview, then I don't want to be seen. Right? I want to be waiting that table yeah. to like as if I don't even exist. Yeah. If someone's coming in and it's just one person and I know they're maybe working alone and they're coming in and maybe they're you know they're just waiting for the next day to you know their salesperson yeah. or something, then maybe I'm going to be a little yeah. more chatty. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to check in on them a little bit. I'm going to talk about the sports game or the weather or whatever, right? And so I've always kind of I always really advocate for people to 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 build be able to build consensus. On your idea, you have to understand what are the interests that are going around. And I think that, that if you're able to really focus more on the, the other person that you're trying to get to see your way mm-hmm. and understand how are they receiving information, how are, what are they saying, and what, are, yeah. what does that mean, then you're going to be a much more effective leader and a much more effective at, at building consensus around ideas because you'll see it differently. And, yeah. and a lot of times... When you when you when you're presenting the normative argument or the the passionate argument, you know a lot of stuff gets lost, and it's not received in the same way. Yeah. And that communication piece is really critical, and and that's something that I've just been lucky enough to 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 just be you know somewhat aware good of. at yeah. Yeah, and aware of. Yeah, it's almost like when you're given the passion approach, it's more serving yourself because you want to express all your passion. You know, you want to get it all out, but at the same time, typically we want we want other people to have buy-in, which oftentimes means almost getting them to believe it's their idea. Like, kind of like what you're saying, people are people are self-interested in the sense of like, well, how does this what does this do for me? Like, but if it benefits them, that's my idea. I'd love to do that. It's almost like if you could bottle that passion and like and use it as fuel for a different approach. Yeah, yeah. because you do need that passion. Like, I'm very passionate. Like, I'm a super passionate person. So, so keep that passion. Right. But that passion isn't the end. 
put it through the right channel. Almost. That's right. That's a means. That yeah. that's what's good. You know, that to me is your art. That's your. That's what you care about. That's what makes you you and unique and amazing. And being able to bottle that, and then and then understand that when two people are in a room, the dynamics change, and yeah. we're playing by a, an objective set of rules. And so if we understand that objective set of rules, and you have bottled that passion, then how you act on that objective plane, yeah, is like. That's that's when your passion is really really um, effective. And if you look at any effective leader, any effective you know person that you admire, they're using that. They're bottling what they what they're most passionate about, and they're executing on an objective plane, understanding how to build consensus and understanding people's interest mm-hmm. and what makes them click a little bit. Yeah. And they're they're working that. Channel. And I feel like, you know, um, that there's a, you know, and then go on to the Creative Mornings talk, that there's a little bit of an imbalance here between that sort of economic and, and that sort of political approach and then the aesthetic, what's called the aesthetic or, or sort of the art, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, approach. And so I, I'd love to see more people that, that do come from that aesthetic or passionate background mm-hmm. to take that, can that put it in there as premium for their tank and then apply that in in that in the sort of the 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 societal way the objective plane of society not to get too philosophical but no it, I you have it. to get deep to to really understand kind of what we're saying and a question that I had is I read a quote the other day that I thought was perfect they used actors as the example but it's pretty much saying like actors have an agent because they would work for free and I think creatives oftentimes the things that they're passionate about they'd be willing to work for free they'd be willing to do these things for free so how do you how do you activate creative people to take those roles in you know i guess entrepreneurship or business or political or any yeah, of those I, so there are a couple of things one you have to lead by example authenticity is the biggest thing right now and so i think that people People are tired of being bamboozled in in ways by just words now. Yeah. And now you actually have to live that life. You don't have to be perfect. I'm not perfect. I mess up all the time. You know, I got I family so. members that yeah. get upset at me for yeah. things I do. I've got little quirks, little things that about me. Uh, you know, I don't like being hot. I, I get, <laughs> I, 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 you know, like I get, get grumpy cranky. when I'm hot. <laughs> you know, like like I got my yeah. stuff too. So, but I think if you look, if you ask. A hundred people that I've met, and you ask them, a majority are going to be like, man, H is a solid guy. Mm-hmm. Like, he is a good guy. And he's going he's gonna to look out for try to make the best decisions. Has he made bad decisions? Yes. Has he, you know, um, done things that he probably shouldn't have? Of course I have. Yeah, we all but have. When, you, when you ask people, like, like, I've done the best that I could in life. And I've yeah. always tried to do right by people. And I think the best way that... That the, the problem is that the people up at the front that are trying to tell you to do stuff or or live in a certain way don't live that way themselves. Yeah. And I think that 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 repetition of that same sort of archetype person. It's like ah, oh, here we go again. This guy's. And so then you're like, this dude's trash. This yeah. dude's trash. This yeah. dude's trash. This this person's trash. This woman's trash. I'm not gonna do that, right? And the reality is, is that we need authenticity. We need people that. That they stand up and and who they've been their whole life is who they're telling you to be, and I think that's so. So you've got to lead by example, and that means that we need. That's a big reason about why I'm running. It's like how could I stand up in front of 500 creatives and yeah. tell them all who's running for office, who's who's joining the school board, yeah. who's going on that planning committee in this town council, if I'm not going to do it myself, right? And 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 it's really important that that we lead by example. And if you're not ready to lead by example, then you can't be in a place to try to tell people what to do. It just it just doesn't work that way. If you're not willing to go through that yourself or have gone through that yourself, it's going to it's going to be very difficult in a world where people are super skeptic. Mm-hmm. It's a cynical sort of way of thinking out there and you have to combat that with authenticity. And so that's number 1. I think the second part goes to some of the stuff we were talking about earlier, which is like you've got to be able to provide the tools and the onboarding for, for yeah. people to be able to make it. And that means that, that, that you know, it's 
you know, I'm I'm learning a lot. I, I came from the sort of the public side of, sorry, private side of stuff, business and, and working with startups and stuff, innovation. And so um, I think, you know, there are a lot of things that I'm learning, you know, like about endorsements and fundraising and, you know, databases with respect to voter files and yeah. stuff, right? And so I think there is a, there is a, a need to be able to just, you know, teach some of the practical stuff to people about what does it actually mean to run for office? What does it mean? And what does that process look like? And, and, and it's actually not that scary. It is Sounds a lot good. of work. Yeah. But, but you can do it. Yeah. And there's people that do it. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you can do it and here are the tools that you need to do that. And so we've got to do a better job of, of helping to, to sort of demystify what it means to run for office and make it easy for people to say, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, and so I would, I would say those two things. I, I think you need to be able to lead by example, and we need a lot of people to, to just give it a shot. Yeah. And we've got to get behind them and, and support them. And then the second is we've got to make it easier, the onboarding process, right? Like, you know, like the second person, the third person, fourth person to climb Mount Everest, it should be easier than the first. Yeah, yeah. Right, and and we've got to do a better job of, of showing that path, sharing that knowledge, and helping to get people up Everest and, and to the top, and and then when more and more people come, and the easier a, it is. The easier it is, and 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 the 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 less it feels like insurmountable. Mm-hmm. You know, the something that you said, which I agree with, is like the the system is not the problem. It's like the people within the system are the problem. And since I work for a government entity, I, I see it. Like, I definitely, I definitely relate to that. But I'm wondering how, like, what does or how does, like, change really happen in your side of the government? Because at least on my side, I, you know, I'm not giving too much context, at least. Um, it's more of, like, military-based things. Mm-hmm. But it's very bureaucratic. It's very slow. And change, change takes... From what I've seen, it takes a lot of push because there's so much pushback. Because, at least from my experience, like the government has been not huge on accepting change. You know, just because, also from my experience, they've they've seen it as um, we've failed in this way before. Failure is scary. We don't want to fail fail again. Here's another rule that puts another another rule in the chain, so you can't get to that end goal of whatever. So, yeah. I that's a that's a super massive question it is and and i think there are you know a couple thoughts for me one thing is i think ultimately especially in today's society people don't have a long enough lens Mm -hmm. right and i think you you have to think in hundreds and thousands of years and I think the problem is we we live in a world where like everything's about instant gratification. I mean, we got cell phones, and, we got yeah, the internet, everything, everything. You you have it, and so if if we didn't make change in five years, better make it in twenty. Better no, make- if we didn't make it in five, it's not enough. We sucked. Yeah. Oh, got it. I get what you're saying. Right? Like, and and I think the reality is we've got to extend that lens, mm. and we've got to start playing chess, not checkers. Mm-hmm. And I think the problem is people want instant gratification and they don't understand that we didn't get here overnight. Yeah. We're not going to get out overnight. Yeah, yeah. And so we've got to we've got to set that understanding that that if you're trying to champ like the, the all the low hanging fruit is already done. All the yeah, easy yeah, yeah. fixes and the little things that we could do to change certain things like that's all been done. Like this is this is the time to like understand we've got some long term issues we've got to deal with and we've got to make some really big decisions and and frankly that's gonna take some sacrifice mm-hmm. um, but I but I and I think there are a lot of people that are excited about that opportunity to fi- you know I think that to to finally like stand up and and make the right decisions for the long term I think there is a there is a, a undercurrent of society that's ready for that yeah we want to do the right thing we want to start planting seeds for a tree that we may not sit under the shade of yeah because we've been planting trees that aren't sustainable just so we can enjoy it you know cut it down i mean i'm only gonna be alive for 80 years it's cool i'll just sit on this tree right right and and i think we've got to do a better job of 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 extending that lens and when you extend that lens 
out as far as it's taken for us to get to this position i.e the government in in your case you feeling that it the culture the way that it operates is in such a way then you start to understand that there that there are little baby steps that we can take incremental steps yeah. to get us to where we need to be and i think in terms of you know uh you know uh when I was in in grad school, and I know he's a he's kind of a interesting figure in his later years, but General Petraeus, which uh, um, when he was a lieutenant general, wrote a book called the Counter Counterinsurgency Manual. Now he didn't write it; they write it himself. There were all these other generals that wrote it, and basically it was a new doctrine about how to the military operates, and it was a really massive change um, in how it operated before and afterwards. In that before. The military was sort of not seen as this like community economic growth based place and and when he wrote that book he said look we're in a different world now we've got to be mindful of our community we got to be mindful of the areas that we go into and he wrote this book and it really changed a lot did it completely change overnight is there still things that we need to work on of course yeah. but the fact is that there there are ways to be able to champion this type of change in culture it's just not going to feel instant yeah and we've got to be okay with that in a yeah. lot of ways and 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 what that does when you when you become okay with the longer lens that allows you to really appreciate the little the, steps yeah yeah right and so you know i can i would always say when we were in conversations one time the the regional head of uh, uh, Bank of America was really struggling with diversity, and we were on a on a panel, and he was asking in the Q and A, was like, "How do I do this? I'm like, I want to have more diversity, but I can't seem to recruit the right talent." Oh man! And we we started to talk about it, but but ultimately at the end, I said, "Look, the fact that you're asking these questions in this room yeah. is major. Yeah, and let's we've got to stop and appreciate that." And so I applaud you for being in this room on camera yeah. in front of all these business leaders asking for more diversity yeah, because yeah. that is, is, is rare. And the fact that you're doing that in and of itself is a champion move mm -hmm. and you should be applauded for that. Yeah. And, and in a lot of ways, you know, sort of, I was trying to put premium in his tank, trying to make his lens longer yeah. and say like, like, hey man, like the fact that you're even in this room wanting more women on your executive team, wanting more people of color, wanting to hire veterans, like that is the type of leadership we need. And that's a big dub. Yeah. That's a huge yeah. dub. Right. And I think, and I think, you know, it's easy to lose sight and to look at that boss of the bank and say, Oh, you can't get it. You can't get you know, anybody. You can't, come yeah. on. Like, dude, you you mean you can't hire no yeah. one? You know, like, and, <laughs> yeah. and then bring him down. And he's like, I'm not going to try anymore. You know, and then he starts, it. and then he gives you, or he gives you the half ass. Yeah. You know, and instead he's like, he feels good. Yeah. He's like, man, all right, I can do this. Yeah. I am doing this. Yeah. I am pushing forward. And I, and I think that we've got to do a better job of picking each other up and having a more human approach to how we interact with people. And and I think it starts with that culture and it starts with, mm -hmm. with, with being a longer lens, but also championing those little steps. If you see someone do the right thing, give them love. Yeah, heck yeah. You know, like like there was a kid, uh, we, we my brother and I pulled up in La Jolla and we were going to get some burritos down by La Jolla Shores. Nice. And... There's this young kid, little kid, little 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 kid, um, couldn't have been more than ten years old. His parents are there, and he's picking up trash. Wow! Just like ran, yeah. like that's what his parents wanted him to do to pick up trash on like this random weekend. And I'm like, and I like told, and I was like, dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah. You're changing the world. Yeah. You 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 are out there changing doing the it. world today, dude. Like you were doing it, and I am so thankful for that. I am thankful for you to be doing that. And I am inspired to go and do that. So we, like, helped them pick up some other yeah. We're Like, hey, bro, here, what about, right? And yeah. it, the whole point was adding fuel to, to to that kid's tank. You know, like, he inspired us, but, but also he needs fuel for his tank. So he can keep going. So he can keep going. Yeah. Because he's out there in a world where, like, he's going to go to some TV screen and see our GHG emissions not go down. He's going to see some weather report that says our, we're at record highs. And he's mm -hmm. going to go to his mom and say, why did I, why did I, why do you have me picking up this trash? Yeah. He's going to think that. Yeah. Like, what is my little contribution, contribution do to this massive thing? 
And what I what, what what my brother and I wanted to fill him with that confidence and that premium to say, no, I inspired these two guys to start mm-hmm. picking up. And if yeah. those two guys inspire two more, more then exponential. Got, yeah. It, that's how you reach scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like we've got to do a better job of of putting premium in each other's tank for the things that we're doing great at. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we've got to inspire one another to to keep pushing. And, 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 and it's really done at that one-to-one scale that then that becomes cultural. Like with Connect All, we, we started with just Nate and I just thinking. And then we added more people. And then we talked to Laura. And then we talked to Greg. And then we talked to the board. And yeah. then we, we we went to pivot the grant. And, you know, we just, like, we, we moved one person at a time. We met this community leader, this council member, this individual official, this person, and then we started to amass something. But you have to bring it back to the individual scale and changing that culture. And that culture comes from in like valuing what people are bringing to the table, right? It's it's like it's like you've got to you got to I mean, love and like show appreciation for that little step because if you have a long lens then you know you the realize, little yeah. move there. Like if you're NASA, you're putting satellites in the air or you're trying to get to the moon yeah. or trying to get to Mars, like one inch off on your trajectory can That's have closer. you in Pluto mm-hmm. as opposed to Mars. Absolutely. One little inch difference here takes us like much m- further light for light years away from where we want to be yeah, yeah and that's where we need to be as a society is understanding these little incremental wins are very important and when you see people doing the right thing and you see people you know doing the things that that get us there in the long term you got to champion those people you got to and and that's the way that real change happens if not, it's not sustainable. If mm-hmm. you force it, or if you, it's just not a sustainable way to do change. Because then there's desire, you know, like we said earlier, from that that single person. Of course, it's positive reinforcement. Of course, it, you know, I always believe that people want to do the right thing, mm-hmm. and and I always have been amazed at what the human potential and capacity can do. And that's why for our campaign, a big part of what we're trying to do is invest more in our community empower people to help us find the solutions for the biggest opportunities that we face uh, you know empower people to come with creative ideas and different mm-hmm. approaches you know we want people to feel like there is a blank canvas for where we can take our community where we can take our district where we can take our city and our country mm-hmm. you know and there is there's huge opportunity and I, and, and I'm constantly uh, inspired by the the how much people want to to yeah. do work people are ready to sacrifice they're ready to do those make those big decisions to maybe eat a little bit less meat maybe you know recycle go that extra step to make sure that you're doing something that's sustainable i think people are ready for that and that's 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 how we're gonna get this 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 society on track and that's how we're gonna get really get the most out of out of where we need to go yeah i think there's there's a lot of good ideas out there, but not a lot not a lot of people execute on them. So maybe just with a little more, just a little push, a little nudge, it'll get them off the ground. You know, yeah, propel them to keep going. You know, that's I think that's a good point. And I think a big part of of it also is is everybody brings something to the table. I've always believed that. It doesn't matter who you are. There's some unique skill. You know, we talked about it. I don't know if you had it recorded earlier, but you, you, we talked about like everybody has an art. Yeah, everybody can paint. Everybody can draw. It's just their style. Mm-hmm. Everybody's good at something, right? And we ha- and 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 we don't do a good enough job as a society of empowering people to really learn about what they're really good at. Yeah. You know, we do we do a good job of getting people to do things that we think they should uh, be doing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You know. Um. You know, and you can see it with advertising. You know, they tell you to be like LeBron. Or, oh yeah. You know, be like this person, or you can turn on Instagram and they're like, you know, be like this person. And I, I'm not protected from that. You know, yeah. I I feel like I want to be like oh, yeah. this person or that person. I'm gonna be sitting on the beach every day next right. to some blue water. Yeah. Whatever it is, um, but the reality is we've got to do a better job of figuring out what we're really good at because I think that when you understand what you're good at, then you know what you can bring to the table and when you get, you know, and people are all unique and when you get these different skill sets together, you know, I don't know who it said, I think it might have been FDR, it says you give me seven people in the room 
and I could change the world. Yeah. You know, and I, and I really believe that. You, you don't need that much to change the world. And, and, and a big part of that is knowing what you bring to the table and really focusing on, on, on your art and what your skill set is. Some people are really good operators. You know, they, they love to get into the nitty gritty of, you know, scheduling and ones and zeros and, and building stuff. Some people are very technical and mm -hmm. they love to just, you know, connect computers yeah. with mics. And, and yeah, yeah. Have, some people are very good at speaking and, and inspiring people. You know, some, you know, it, it takes it takes a whole team. And so we're going to need a community that that feels empowered to bring their skills to the potluck, bring their best dish. You know, so that we can all eat. You know what I mean? And yeah. and, uh, and so yeah, so that's a that's a big important part of it is just being able to to identify what is your skill set and saying, hey, like I'm really good at this. And then we got to empower people to bring that to the table and then utilize that mm -hmm. uh, because there's so much work to be done. We can we can we can really use all kind of skills. I'd love to know what experiences you've had that allowed you to find the things that you're good at, and then. Who are people that empowered you? Who who are the people that encourage you to, you know, strive for all of this extracurricular? Yeah, if you're, if you're yeah. Um, so art for me, I think, is a really important part of 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 my life, uh, and I thank my brother Khalid for that uh, in a lot of ways. Um, I I thank my mother for her love and unconditional love that I think really instilled in me a a love for people and um, a, um, it's like a sensitivity and and uh, a care for for people and and you know my mother she's always smiling she's always happy she's always l loving and nice and sometimes too nice to people and you know and she she just she's a you know, she just believes in people, and she instilled in that. She believed, you know, and she she instilled dreams in us. You know, we never went without dreams, you know, um, and I thank my mother for that. And my dad, you know, my dad grew up in mud floors in Colombia, you know, and to be where all of his sons are have degrees, three of the four have advanced degrees. That's you amazing. Know, it, it, like, my dad put in hard work and... And, and and some humility and discipline and so you know my brothers um, my two little brothers they just like they just love and love and and Saeed uh, just like he's such a strong wise man and and you know instilled in me that that you know that 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 life is deeper uh, and then the you know J J J Jari the the youngest one he's just he's the best of us he's got everything you know he, he's just he, he's so loyal to his brothers he'll fight for his brothers and and he teaches me that every day and then you know my wife God man my wife is is she's taught me so much you know it's it, we're so different she she grew born and raised in Munich Germany incredible family um, you know she's the oldest of four. Um, she's extremely smart. She's a pharmacist, PharmD, and a PhD in oncology, cancer research. Like she's just she's killing it. She's killing it. But she's she's such a she's the nicest. She's so um, strong, um, and she's um, you know she's just she, she's super loving. And I've learned and grown so much from her. And you know things like you know I wasn't always you know. I'm a big meat eater, you know. Yeah, I like yeah. to eat. I, mean, I grew up in Texas, man. Yeah, I that's eat right. Steak every yeah. day, and um, and and she's the one that's pushed me to think in terms of you know the amount of meat I'm eating and and what that does for the environment. And you know she's really big on. We use uh, shout out to to Farzan at the trolley bag. So we use the trolley bag, which is a startup that that we work with oh, cool. uh, up in Carlsbad, a husband and wife duo that have you know, uh, bags that you could take for your grocery store. Uh -huh. And she's like, always on me. Like, did hey. we bring the toilet bags? <laughs> like, we're not buying plastic yeah. bags, you know? Yeah. And, like, and like really pushing our family to be much more sustainable. And, and, and you know, early in our, in our relationship, was, it had always been like that. And it's, and it's really taught me a lot. 
um, you know, a big part of my growth as well. It, it was was um, in London. I think you know, I, I, you know, I'd reached a place where, you know, I sort of, you, you know, had a lot of, you know, influence and 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 knew a lot of you know, quote unquote, movers and shakers and and. And you know, and and my my year at the at the LSC really pushed me to think in terms of why I was doing what I was doing and what mattered to me. And and I kept being pushed to to art and and understanding that. And I think I go into the Creative Mornings talk about this, you know, this this inequality, you know. And I try to cut that back, not about race inequality or wealth inequality, but really. The inequality about how we look at the world, and 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 I had a professor to really, you know, thought just shout out to Simon Glendening. He just he's the only professor that had a crazy beard and a crazy hair and like at this school, and but he just commanded, um, and he pushed me to really think about why I was so into the things I was into, and one of the things that we got to was this this art and this level of measurement, and essentially. It goes and it talks about how, you know, we look at that tree back there and we'll look at a tree and one level of measurement, which is like the political or the economic level of measurement, looks at that tree and says, you know, how how many pencils can I get out of that tree? How many sheets of paper can I get out of that tree? How many boats can I build in canoes? And the aesthetic level of measurement will look at that tree and say, man, look how strong it is. That's a dope how, tree. That's a dope tree. Look how it takes our carbon dioxide and like turns it into oxygen. It drinks that and breathes that and then exhales oxygen for us to breathe. Look how strong those leaves are so we can sit under the shade and, and look how it you know it nurtures the birds and, 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 and really looks at it in a different way. And basically, you know, what a what happens is that we value one way to look at that tree mm -hmm. over another in society mm -hmm. which is natural right we're gonna do that but the problem is over in more recent times the one side is extremely skewed over the other yeah and that then that that imbalance of how we look at the tree in this example manifests itself in our everyday lives and creates a type of society culture, yeah. and a culture um that that makes it you know where we are today and so you can look at it simply as you know i have two thousand friends on linkedin yeah. and that somehow makes me more valuable valuable yeah. than you know B bill who has three yeah right or i have forty thousand twitter followers and i'm you know 50 million people watch my podcast yeah and uh, you know uh, Hillary Clinton is my best friend. Yeah. Or Barack Obama <laughs> or whoever is yeah. my best friend, and you don't have any best friends like that. Your best friend is H. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. all you get. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so somehow we 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 value them instantly. Yeah. And this goes to how we look at people that are homeless, or that's how we look at people that. In any way, we're looking at them through a, a political or economic lens most of the time, and so. You know, I tried at that, you know, when I got to this sort of realization, I started to really try to check myself. Mm -hmm. And the best way I found to be able to check myself is through art. Nice. Because as I, as I paint or as I draw or as I write poetry, it forces me to remember that the level of measurement of the aesthetic is just as valuable as how many people are going to listen to this podcast. Yeah. And, and going back to the, the sort of earlier point of if I'm not doing it myself, then I cannot ask anyone else to do it. Mm -hmm. If I am not championing, um, balancing myself and how I view the world as yeah. best I can, yeah. I'm never going to be perfect, then I can't expect the world to do it. Uh, and so and so at that point, that really changed me to, to realize, you know, the, the other thought there is that in my circles... Amongst all my friends, I had the most LinkedIn yeah. friends. I yeah. was, 
you Mr. were that guy, Mister Political Economic. I, I was six hundred and seventy-two pencil guy. Right, I was that guy yeah. building seven canoes and four yachts out of that, and like the newest yacht and the yeah. newest canoe, and you know, and training other people to look at the trees yeah. in the same way, right, and yeah. showing them the ways on how do you get six hundred and seventy pencils instead of the six hundred you think. But I yeah. got a trick to yeah. show you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I realized that that. In a lot of ways, those that have done that the most actually have to um, to be the champions of those of the a new way yeah. of the of the, the 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 rebalance, right? Because those are the ones that like have that influence. And so, if you see me painting, and this has happened a lot now, I've got friends that you never thought would be painting are painting now. Really, right? And they're painting, and not maybe they're not painting. Maybe they're playing music. Maybe they're doing a podcast. Maybe they're, uh, you know, rapping or singing. But they've realized, like, because of the example that I read, it's like, hey, I've got to go and do this too. Yeah. Right? Because we are social animals. We're social beings. And we are influenced by our fellow man and woman. And so when you start to see people you admire do stuff. You want to emulate it. Then you want to emulate that. And so I I felt that a big part of how I was living in my sort of earlier part of life, you know, and while I always did people right, there was this imbalance and this inequality in how I, how I looked at the world. And I felt it really important that if I wanted people to, 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 to look at a world differently than, than how we look at it probably now, that I needed to live by example. And so that kind of has influenced, you know, my whole trajectory since, since then has changed. I've been painting for over a decade now, and, and it's, it's completely changed the way I operate. It's completely changed the way I, change, I, I address people. It's changed the type of work that I like to do. I, you know, I've worked with gamification startups yeah, yeah. that are trying to battle student loan debt. I've worked for, you know, helping companies like expand their footprint at, in the Whole Foods, Whole Planet Foundation with yeah. sustainable flip flops from Guatemalan rubber trees. Like, and most recently as an executive at Connect, helping to bridge the diversity gap yeah. in innovation and, and working with people on impact investing stuff and, and so like it's really changed the way that i look at the world i still work hard i still am a champion i'm just using those skill sets and using that energy yeah. to try to help adjust this this imbalance in which i see and i feel like back to your earlier point on the government thing i feel like there's a lot of this imbalance in how our government looks at the world in how our government operates yeah and that's not to say there aren't champions in there, okay. there i've met plenty of champions there's champions on that city council there's champions in the mayor's office yeah. there's champions that are trying to do it just like i know there's champions in your office yeah we just don't have enough of them yep and we need more of them and that's why that's why we're running and that's what we want to do we want to come in and be a champion um uh, to, to help and to 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 learn um uh, and grow together so that we can really you know provide the the society with the the type of government that I think and and that that I think a lot of people believe we should have. Man, love it. We're gonna move on to the lightning round. All right, if you're ready for it. I don't know. If I'm ready man, for there's it. there's so many other questions I want to ask you, but man, that's all right. Yeah, we'll get to them. We'll yeah. get to them at some point. Lightning round. All you gotta do is don't you? Is all you gotta I do is. <laughs> I'm not sure I can read your handwriting. It's artistic. I like it. Um, all you gotta do is answer as quickly as you can. Yeah. Ready? Favorite thing about your wife? Oh man, her love. She's 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 unconditional love in the real way. And there's nothing more amazing feeling as a human being than when you're unconditionally loved. She loves me unconditionally, and that means everything to me. What book has had the greatest impact on your life? Ooh, there there are a couple. I'll, I'll just name them quickly because I think the, the books together are important. So Autobiography of a Yogi, um, the, the Hero with a Thousand Faces, Celestine Prophecy, The Fountainhead, Ooh, and really? The Art of the World. Um, what painting are you most proud of? Ooh, there's, a, there's, 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 there's one painting um, that I'm giving to somebody who did something really, really incredible for for my me and my wife, my wife and I, my wife and me, my wife, wife and yeah, me, my wife, my wife and me. And me. Nice, you get that. Yeah. Um, and he did it over a year and a half ago, Dang. and has no idea. 
and we just got it framed. Heck and yeah. it's actually, we're going to show the piece on display at the art show on July 11th for the Camping Kickoff Art Show. If you can come, that'd be dope. Heck yeah. Um, and we'll put, put it, and it's called Herbert. It's named after him. Uh, and it is an epic piece. It's framed. The frame came out amazing. Like It's just like the most beautiful piece. Heck yeah. Best food spot in San Diego. Ooh. This is a big deal. This is a big one. This is a big one. Yeah. This is like, uh, I don't want to, best food Ooh, spot. Yeah. Look, I know I know this is going to cause some controversy <laughs> because it has to do with, like, I love Mexican food. I can eat Mexican food like Same. Not seven that. times yeah. a week. Like, it's a thing with my wife. She's like, she's no, knock it off. Knock it off. Take it easy. <laughs> not, not, not. I would say Tacos El Gordo. Really? Where's that at? That's down on H H Street. Oh my uh, gosh, that's I know, why. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's on H Street. <laughs> uh, down, down on the south side. Um, Tacos El Gordo. They also, it's a chain started in Tijuana. If you oh, really? The, Tijuana is very good. And then if you're down in Tijuana, Tacos El Frank has the best oh. carne asada Dang. ones. Um, the Adobada is my favorite, though. Um, and from Tacos El Gordo. Dang, I'm gonna keep that in mind. Yeah. Which beach do you spend the most time at? <sighs> Which beach? Uh, so probably the dog beach at De- Del Mar. Oh, really? Yeah, just because we have got the a dog. little dog, a uh, little rescue from T- TJ. His name's Ralph. He's a little champion, um, and he loves to play. And so we we try to take him out there, and that's the closest beach to to our area that that allows dogs off leash. Perfect. All right. That was the whole. That was the that whole was lightning, lightning round. That was lightning that was pretty round. Good. Yeah, it was pretty quick. All right. All right. Final question. Yeah. What What life strategy are we taking away from this? Life strategy are we taking? Look, I I think the the best thing you can do is is live authentically. You know, find figure out what who you are as as best you can, and then know that that's not a end. That's a journey. Mm-hmm. Um, that you want to continue to work oh, like on improving yourself and whatever that looks like just don't stop pushing for improvement and self-improvement um and 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 if you don't know where to start just start with your art like literally pull a uh, a pen out and a pay, pad and just like just start and and just follow that journey and and go to where you know when you're painting something go to a place where it, it like you you ruined it you messed it up mm-hmm. and then push through that you know I, it's funny in in our world in the innovation world we are trained to see challenges like you see a brick wall and you get excited yeah right you you lick your chops because you see an opportunity where everyone else sees challenge you see an opportunity and I think that's what we need in society, and that's how, what gets me excited about about the work that we're doing. And I really think that the more that you can see opportunities, or sorry, challenges as, as opportunities for growth, the better you're going to be. And so when you do mess up a painting, like I've messed up so many quote quote, I'm putting mm-hmm. air quotes here with the messed up ones, and it wasn't until like I just kept pushing that the masterpiece came out. Yeah. And so just continuously improve, continuous learn. You, this is all part of a journey. Uh, and, and just try as much as you can to find out what is your art and, ref- and improve that and get better at that and then share that with the world. And then have your friends help you improve that. Mm-hmm. And then encourage the people around you through your example to do the same thing. And I think if we're able to all do that, Man, we're gonna have an amazing society, and, and I and I really believe people want that. I see it every day. I know that's what they want to do, and 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 for me, that pursuit and that excitement is what's driving me. You know, like I know people can maybe see the issues with our environment. They see the issues with our transportation, our infrastructure, student debt, and they get overwhelmed, and 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 in a lot of ways, rightfully so. But uh, but to me. I get excited at the opportunity for tackling that. Like yeah. for whatever reason, whatever you believe in doesn't matter. For yeah. whatever reason we've been put into this world at this moment in time, this is our time yeah. to really start to address those issues. And like like we got to get excited. I mean my hair is sticking up. I'm yeah, getting excited yeah. Yeah. about like making those long-term decisions that are going to not just be good for us, but also for our kids, my future daughter, um, our grandkids like we want to make sure we leave this place better than where we found it and so you know find your art 
continuously improve, continuous learn, share that with people, and get excited about making the big decisions that we need to make to, to leave this place better than when we left it. That's what I want to leave with people. Love it. Great life strategy. Mine's going to be just value in the little things and be vulnerable enough to encourage other people. Yeah. That's mine. That's good. I appreciate you. Thanks for being on the show. Hey, dude. man, thank this you. I appreciate you reaching out. Yeah, man, hopefully hopefully it's good and, and, and invite me whenever I'm here. Sweet. Where can we find you on the internet? Yeah, um, so you can, you can go to our website, hpuentes.com, H-P-U-E-N-T-E-S.com. We've got a campaign kickoff on July 11th uh, over at, from 5 to 8 p.m. over on Eastgate Mall. One of our supporters, Bill Kootner, who's been a, a champion since day one, is going to host us there. Um, I'm going to be putting up some of my art I was to say, show. Yeah. So if you guys want to come check it out, you know, we're just trying to run a different type of campaign. We're different. Yeah, you know, okay. that, that, that's our lane, and so I want to share my art. Uh, and so please come out and check us out. There'll be some snacks, some drinks. Um, you can find us on, on, on Instagram and Twitter at The H Puentes. Uh, and then on Facebook, you can you can like the group, just Puentes 2020. Uh, find us on Facebook. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Bye. Take care. Well, there you have it. Thank you for listening to this episode. H. Puentes is absolutely a legend. He's going to do amazing things for the San Diego community. Please consider supporting him. Please consider donating to his campaign. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to the reviewer of the week, Blondidi. Blondidi says, I really enjoyed your podcast with Kristen B. She seems like a genuine person with a lot of great insight. Thank you, Blondidi. I do this for you. If you want a chance to be the review of the week, go ahead and give this podcast 5 stars and leave a review. By the way, this is Nick. This is not a robot, this is Nikolai's Natali. As Nick, I encourage you to follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon as Nicholas Natali. Have a great week. Love your dear friend, the robot, I mean Nick. This is definitely, Nick. <laughs>